iPadOS 16 will come out this Monday, the 24th of October. And while you are eagerly waiting to install it, let's talk about the things you might not get. Yeah, you heard that right. From the over 100 new features that Apple has promised, there were about 37 features not all of you will get. Some of those you might not get on your iPad even if you can install iOS 16 on your device. And some of those you might not get even if you have one of the latest iPads which you might have bought this year. Crazy, right? Now follow me to check out which features you might not get. For this I created the ultimate feature matrix for all iPad models. Now don't worry if you can't read this, if you have a small device, if you see this video on mobile, I have a download link for you. First, let's find out how to check which iPad model you have. You need to go to settings, general and then about. There you will see the model name as well as the capacity of your device in gigabytes. Both of these could define what feature will work on your iPad and what will not. Let's talk about which iPads will get iOS 16 in the first place. Apple has said that all iPad Pro models, even the old one from 2015, will get iOS 16. From the iPad Airline, the third generation and later will get it. From the iPad itself, the fifth generation and later. And the iPad Mini will need the fifth generation and later to install iOS 16. So you can see all the models and build years down below in the matrix. So let's get through all 37 features which have caveats in the Apple description. You see Apple has created a great stunning overview of key features in iOS 16. But they have also created a great and more complete list of all new features which come to iOS 16. The problem is lots of them come with caveats. That means they only work on certain models or certain regions or certain languages or they have other restrictions. I created the ultimate overview matrix for you. So for every feature I will mention you will see at the bottom of this video which models will get it and what caveats Apple is giving. So let's get started. Number one iCloud shared photo library. You can share a separate iCloud photo library with up to five other people. Now I'm eagerly awaiting this one because I can finally share all my photos or a subset of my photos with my loved ones without creating shared folders. You can even say when you shoot a video or when you shoot photos that this photo goes directly into a shared library. It's a great feature and I can't wait to have it. Unfortunately it will not come out next week. The good news is all iPad models will get it, so no problem here, but we all have to wait. Sorry. You can now edit a message for up to 50 minutes after sending it, and the recipients will be able to see a record of edits made to the message. Now this will also come to all iPad models, which is great, but the caveat is of course that the recipient will first see the edits, and the user can make up to 5 edits to a given message. Number 3. Again messages. You can recover recently deleted messages. This one is also for all iPad models, no problem here. But you can only recover the deleted message if it was deleted within 30 days. So this is the caveat. After 31 days they are gone. Number 4. Mail. Smart search correction. Again a feature which will work on all iPad models. This will intelligently improve your results by correcting typos and using synonyms for your search terms, which is great. But the caveat is it is only available in English and in some countries like Australia, Canada, India, Singapore and the UK and of course the US. So if you are using a different language or if you're outside of these regions you might not have this feature. Number 5. Mail. Missing recipients and attachments. You now get notified if you forget to include an important part of your message like the recipient or an attachment. Again it's a really great feature but Again, it's available only in English, like in Australia, in Canada, in India, in Singapore, UK, and the US. And if you are outside of that region, if you're using another language, you are out of luck here. So, but otherwise, it will come to all of the iPad models. Number six, mail, undo send. You can now easily unsend an email message that you just sent before it reaches the recipient's inbox. It comes to all iPad models, but the caveat is undo send is available for up to 30 seconds after sending. You can select the duration under the composing setting. So you have 30 seconds and then it is sent and you can't get it back. That's the caveat. Number seven, mail follow up. Now this moves send email messages to the top of your inbox so you can quickly send a follow up. It also comes to all iPad models but it's only available in English, Australia, Canada, India, Singapore, UK and again the US. Number eight, now comes the big one, stage manager. This one is for the on-screen stage manager because 
Apple did something unusual. First, they promised this feature set to only the iPads which have an M1 or an M2 chip. But then there was a lot of outcry over this decision. And Apple did something unusual. They changed their decision. And now even some older iPads get this feature. They now also included the iPad pros of 2018 and 2020. But now they made a decision whether stage manager is on screen or including external monitors. So that's why I had to split this feature into two parts. So the on screen stage manager is now available on the iPad Air, the fifth generation and above, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, the third generation and above, and the iPad Pro 11 inch, the first generation and above. And I made a complete video about how to use this feature alone on newer iPads, but also on these older iPads, and especially on these older iPads. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's in this link here. Number nine, stage manager, external monitor support. Now this is interesting because this used to work on M1 iPads and with 16.1, the latest beta, which is the version that will come out, they removed this completely. So not even M1s can now have an external monitor supporting stage manager. They say it will come later this year and they need to work on it. Full external display support comes to the iPad Pro with the M1 chip and above with resolutions up to 6K. Then you can work with different apps on your iPad and external display. We just have to wait. And the people who have an older iPad from 2018 and 2020 will not get external monitor support for stage manager. Number 10, reference mode. This is interesting because this feature is so exclusive that it only works on one iPad model of all the 23 models I have mentioned. I think it was 23, right? I have to check. This will only work on the latest 12.9 inch iPad from 2022. If you even bought an iPad Pro 11 inch, you will not get this feature. Sorry. Now what does it do? It enables the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with liquid retina XDR display to deliver a reference color for popular color standards and video format. So if you are not into heavy video edit, you might not need that feature anyway. And the other thing is you can use the reference mode also with Sidecar, of course, only with this one iPad model. And then you can use the uh, iPad as a secondary reference display for your Mac. Now this feature is only available to the iPad Pro 12.9 inch with liquid retina XDR display and Mac computers with Apple Silicon. Number 11, display zoom. So a new display scaling setting increases the pixel density of the display so you can view more in your app. Now this is a feature we have already seen on a Mac to see more or to have more screen real estate. Now if you have good eyes you can reduce the size and you can see more content, right? That's good. Now this one is interesting because on Apple's official page, it says that it's available on the iPad Air 5th generation, iPad Pro 12.9 inch 5th generation and later, and the iPad Pro 11 inch 1st generation and later. And I doubt that this is true, the last one, the iPad Pro 11 inch, because the iPad Pro 11 inch is not an M1 chip. While all of the other iPads require an M1 chip, the iPad Pro 11 inch is not an M1 chip. I think this is a printing error on Apple's side. So I believe this one will need an M1 chip. And if you don't have an M1 chip, I think you will be out of luck, but I cannot test it actually because I don't have this specific model. So I think you will not get it if you have an iPad Pro 11 inch first generation, but we will see. Number 12, games, share play support. Now games that use Game Center multiplayer support have now share play integration, but this feature will not be available on Monday. It will come later again. You can then start playing automatically with friends on a FaceTime call. This will come in an update later this year and is available to all iPad models, which is great. Number 13, live text. Live text means that the text is completely interactive in post video frames. So you can use functions like copy and paste, look up and translate. Live text works in photos, quick look, safari and more apps. Now this one is only available on iPads with A12 Bionic and later and only available in English, Chinese, French, Italian, German, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Spanish and Ukrainian text. So you have a restriction with some iPad models and with languages here. Number 14, Siri, easy shortcut setup. You can now run shortcuts with Siri as soon as you download an app. 
there is no setup required. That is actually a great feature if you use shortcut and you should. Again, this is only available on iPad with A12 Bionic and later, and it requires download of certain speech models, which you see in the matrix down below. Number 15, Siri, emojis and text. Now you can insert emojis when sending messages with Siri. It's also available on iPads with A12 Bionic and later, and it requires the same download of speech models. Again, look at the matrix down below. Number 16, Siri. There's a feature called, Hey Siri, what can I do? Now you can discover Siri capabilities in iPad OS and apps by asking, Hey Siri, what can I do here? You can also inquire about a specific app by saying, for example, Hey Siri, what can I do with iRobot? And Apple says iRobot support will come later. So don't try this on Monday. This is available on iPads with A12 Bionic and later, and it requires the same download of speech models. Number 17, Siri, call hang up. Siri can help you to hang up a call completely hands-free. You just have to say, hey Siri, hang up. And the participants on the call will hear you, by the way. <laughs> so you can enable this feature in settings. This is also available on iPads with A12 Bionic and later, and requires download of those same speech models. See the description down below. Number 18, Siri, expanded offline support. Now Siri processes more types of requests offline without an internet connection, which is great. This includes home control, home kit, intercom and voicemail. And again, this is available on iPads with A12 Bionic and later, and it requires the download of the same speech models, yada, yada, yada. Number 19, Home. Home will get a new app, and this new app has an all new design that makes it easier to navigate, organize, view, and control all your accessories. Now, improvements to the underlying architecture enhance your smart home's performance and make it more efficient and reliable. This will come to all iPad models, by the way. Number 20, the updated architecture of Home. This will come later this year and will work on all iPad models. Now, enhancements to this underlying architecture enable faster and more reliable performance, especially for homes with many smart accessories. You can communicate with and control connected accessories more efficiently from multiple devices at the same time using the uh, Home app. Now the new home architecture is a separate update in the home app and it will be available in a software update later this year. It requires of course all Apple devices that access their home to be using the latest software. And sharing control of your home and receiving home notifications require a home hub. Now you can use this feature only really effectively if you have an Apple TV or a HomePod. Both of them act as home hubs. Number 21, Matter support for your home. Now Matter is a new smart home connectivity standard that will enable compatible accessories to work together seamlessly and across platforms. This is really great news for those who want to automate your home. Matter will allow you to choose from even more compatible smart home accessories and control them with the Home app and Siri on Apple devices. It will come to all iPads, but of course you will need Matter accessories. And of course it requires a Home Hub like an Apple TV or a HomePod device. Number 22, Freeform. This is interesting. This is a new app that Apple just pitched and it's not available currently because it's not even on the iPad beta that I have. Freeform is a nice looking productivity app which gives you ultimately an open space canvas where you and your collaborators can bring ideas to life. You can sketch and jot down notes with Apple Pencil. You can share files and insert web links, documents, videos and audio. But it will not come on Monday. You just have to wait for it. But it will be available on all iPads. Also nice. Number 23, accessibility detection mode in Magnifier. Now this is a feature you might never use, I might never use it, but if you depend on this, this is really great. All of the accessibility features in Apple are great. So now you can get rich descriptions of your surroundings with a new Magnifier mode that contains door detection, people detection, and image descriptions. It's available on iPad Pro 12.9 inch, fourth generation and later, iPad Pro 11 inch, second generation and later, because it needs a LiDAR scanner. Number 24, accessibility door detection and magnifier. This one is already mentioned in number 23, but now you can locate a door, read signs or labels around it and get instructions for how to open the door. This is also great news for someone who needs that. This is also available on iPad Pro 12 inch 9, fourth generation and later, and iPad Pro 11 inch, second generation and later, because it also needs the LiDAR sensor. Number 25, accessibility, live captions. This is a beta. Now transcriptions should be generated automatically in real time for users who are deaf or hard of hearing so they can follow along more easily with conversations, audio and video. 
Again, a great feature for those who need it. And you can also see automatically transcribed dialogue integrated into your FaceTime video calls. With speaker attribution, it's easy to follow along with group conversations. Now this is unfortunately only available currently in English in Canada and the US on iPads with A12 Bionic and later, so I can't test it. Sad. Number 26, accessibility. Voice control spelling mode. Now you can dictate names, addresses and other custom spellings letter by letter using voice control spelling mode. Again, a feature which is great for those who need it. It's available, unfortunately, also only in English and in the US currently. Number 27, app clips. Now app clips will support live activities, but this is a feature which will come later and this is available to all iPads. Number 28, dictation, a new dictation experience. This is a great feature and I created a complete video how to use this and I link it here. While dictating on a device, you can now move fluidly between voice, touch and Apple Pencil. Type with the keyboard or write with Scribble. Tap in the text field, move the cursor and insert quick type suggestions all without needing to stop dictation. This is really an awesome feature and it's available on all iPads with A12 Bionic and later and it requires a download of speech models again. See the description in the matrix. Number 29. Dictation again, auto punctuation. Now dictation inserts commas, periods and question marks for you as you dictate. This is available in the same language set and with the same set of iPads. And it's also mentioned in my video that I linked before too. Number 30, dictation emoji support. You can insert emojis using your voice while dictating on device. Again, the same iPads get it and the same languages get it. Number 31, FaceTime live caption. This is again a beta and you will see automatically transcribed dialogue integrated into your FaceTime video calls. With speaker attribution, now it's easy to follow along with group conversations. This is available only in English in Canada and the US on iPads with A12 Bionic and later. Number 32, Spotlight, image search in more apps. Now Spotlight uses information from images in messages, notes and files to enable searching by locations, people, scenes or even things in the images like text, a dog or a car. It's available on the iPad Air 5th generation with a minimum of 256 gigabytes of storage. The iPad Pro 12.9 inch 5th generation and later and the iPad Pro 11 inch 3rd generation and later. Number 33, virtual memory swap. iPad storage can be used to expand the available memory for all apps and delivers up to 16 gigabytes of memory for the most demanding apps. It's available only on iPad Air 5th generation with a minimum of 256 gigabyte and iPad Pro 12.9 inch 5th generation and later and iPad Pro 11 inch 3rd generation and later. Number 34, translate. You can now translate via camera. You can translate text around you using the camera in the Translate app. This will pause the view to get translations overlaid on text in a photo and zoom in to get a closer look or translate text in photos from your photos library. This is a great feature and it's available on iPad with A12 Bionic and later. Number 35, Visual Lookup. You can now lift the subject from the background and insert it somewhere else in the mail. Now this lifting of the subject isolates the subject by removing the background. This works in photos, screenshots, quick look, safari and more. And it's available on iPad with A12 Bionic and later. Number 36, Visual Lookup, new domains. Visual Lookup now adds recognition of birds, insects and statues. That's also available on A12 Bionic and later and available in English and other languages as you can see in the matrix down below. And now to the final one, Number 37, Wallet, Apple Pay Later. Now you can buy with Apple Pay and split the purchase into four equal repayments spread over six weeks with no interest and no added fees. Now this is coming in a future update for qualifying applicants in the United States for purchases online and in apps on iPhones and iPad. And it may not even be available in all states. Wow, that was a long list, but now you know which feature you might get or not, depending on your device. What Ever feature set you get, I hope you have as much fun with iOS 16 as I have. By the way, you can download the complete matrix from the description below. And also, if you haven't, you might check out my in-depth video about using Stage Manager on all iPads, but especially the older ones. You can click right here after the video. So that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.